those on all sorts in all sorts of communities. But we call it blood lichen because of the red color. It's kind of characteristic of Florida. It's a combination of bacteria and fungus that are growing together. A lot of lichen is a combination of algae and fungus. This one is a symbiotic relationship between bacteria and fungus. One provides the food, one provides the house, and so it's a symbiotic relationship. But you, you start looking at these trees and you're going to see all kinds of lichen, gray, scaly stuff, flat gray stuff, red, it's all lichen. And uh, it's not an indicator species so much because it's pretty much everywhere. Does it hurt the... the... It doesn't hurt it at all. Okay. As a matter of fact, the whole outside of the tree is dead. Bark is dead. Right. You don't get to any living tissue until you get about a quarter of an inch or half an okay. inch inside So here. it's not going to do anything to hurt the, the tree? Okay. Nope. Okay. Provides a lot of habitat. Because there are things, you know. Hey, turtle. Look at the turtle. That's not a turtle, is it? Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. There's another one up there. <laughs> there's the chick and here's the dude. He's going after him. He's like, what the heck are you guys doing? Let me get out of your way. Little box turtle. Hi, guys. Let me see. He's moving. Look at him move. <laughs> Move his face, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's the female. The male is crawling That was the male here. back there chasing the bear, right? That's Pedro. That's Pedro's, <laughs> doesn't it? Aww. Yeah, this would be caved in on the on the plastron if it were a, a uh, male for mounting the female. And that's a box turtle? Oh, I get it. I don't think that's a box turtle. I think they're boxy. Or anybody know they're turtles? I think a it's a paint turtle. turtle. I think I it might be a snapping. Turtle. When I a box a turtle, turtle pulls in, so you put you your, it's completely Yeah, enclosed. and it's much more boxy shell, and they're not right. typically yeah. that big. Uh, I don't know which of the... Paper oh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. definitely yeah. out of the... Pine trees, and all of these green trees behind you, the short little green ones, those are called uh, Loblolly Bay. Uh, that's an index. This is called a pine flatwoods. And it's flat, and it's full of pines, and it's, um, it's old ocean bottom. So, in Florida, especially on the coast, the ridges like St. John's Bluff, Blandy, uh, Roosevelt Boulevard's built on a bluff, Southside Boulevard's built on a bluff, these are the high spots, the old shoreline that used to, when the water was up into Jacksonville and beyond. But in between those beach periods where the ocean sat flat, this was ocean bottom. So you're going to see where the beach was here, probably 10, 20,000 years ago, um, in a minute. This is the ocean bottom, so flat, sandy, Take your foot and just scrape a little of this humus uh, away, and you're going to get to sand. It's going to be a gray sand. That's old uh, ocean bottom. Wow. You can even find seashells if you if you yeah. look. Yeah. Like I've got some water. Got this was uh, this was all under the water, all underwater, right after the melting of the last ice age. Is that Every what it was? And it went through an ice receded. age. And went into a warming period. It would, Ice Age, it was high and dry and cold, and in between, the interglacials were all uh, wet, hot. So, when the, remember now, Florida was totally under the water originally, and then it went through several periods where it was no more than a little spit of land around Gainesville, Ocala, and Tallahassee, little island shape. So, it was as much as, and, and when it was super cold, and all the water was in ice on the poles, it went out. Now where you go out it's 100 feet deep in the ocean, that was dry land. And it went out to where it's about 300 feet and then it drops off. So it is just a big out. sandbar. What about like fossils? Do you, do you find fossils? Right. Yeah. So you do find Florida's just a big sandbar? Shells, basically. Yeah. But because of the soil's so acid, it basically dissolves fossils. So if it's a relatively young area, you'll still see seashells, but fossils uh, will not last in this. It's too acidic. Shark's teeth about the only thing uh, more hair in. Yeah, because of the enamel, they'll yeah. last longer. What are these? Okay, so indicator plants for our pine flatwoods. Uh, what are these? Palmettos. Loblolly Bay. That's spelled L-O-B-L-O-L-L-Y. 
Bob Lolly, it's our city flower, by the way. <clears throat> Is it? And it has a beautiful white flower in the spring, in about May. Beautiful. Oh, it looks like a baby magnolia. Do you see the red leaves up in that green? Y'all see the red? Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's, that's the uh, that's a characteristics of loblolly bays. So they always have a few red leaves in mixed in with the green. Um, anybody ever heard of bayhead? Bayhead. Yeah. Got any hunters in it? Okay. You get areas that are just solid bay trees. We won't do that today, but so uh, indicator plants. Oh, this one right here is called um, <laughs> is called gallberry. Gall it's a holly. It's called gall, G-A-L-L berry, and it is it, it is one of the biggest indicator plants. Uh, it produces a berry that deer eat, and mm -hmm. typically it'll be in bushes more like six feet high. You'll see it when we go through here. And On the animal side, very good honey out of it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's That's good for game. From the flowers, it's called gallberry. On the animal side, you pretty much can get anything here. Um, you do have some. You also no, like have some snakes that are very common in the pine flatwoods. I'd like you to look those up. Right, right. Okay, y'all hear that? You have some snakes that are very. Uh, um, indigenous to pine flatwoods. Why don't you look those up for your animals? You have deer, you have turkey in here, but you don't have that many animals that are just found in pine flatwoods. What about like boars and stuff or hogs or anything like that? You have hogs in here, but you'll have hogs all the way from the deepest forest down there all the way. So it's not really specific. Yeah. Okay. So look up indicator <laughs> animals for pine flatwoods. Uh, what maintains this? Fire. Fire. If this is left alone and not, not burned, it'll turn to hardwood. So this is uh, our new professor, uh, Dr. Husband. His job with the Nature Conservancy was to burn natural areas so that you get the diversity of communities. If you protect this from fire for more than 20, 30 years, this will all be gone. It'll all be replaced with oak trees. Uh, there's an oak trying to come up. See, if we had a fire through here, that oak tree would die. The pines would just be scorched, and they're just having a good time with the fire. And so you would get rid of all the hardwoods. Um, so this will be burned again? So, well, the university has a tough situation because when you're stuck between major highways and you do a prescribed burn, and there's too much smoke on the highway, right. you can really be in trouble. So yeah. they do a little bit of burning, but they're, you, it's just too risky Amazing. from a liability standpoint. Now, out, like Osceola National Forest, it's burned own every burns, year. Though. I mean, there would be a oh, lightning yeah. strike, and the whole forest, there's like really nothing you can do about it. What about <laughs> lightning? Start, yeah, what about like lightning and things here, starting a fire? A what about lightning? So commuters trying to get to work. What, what about lightning? If you had a lightning well, fire. Like they're like a natural burn? Oh, all the time. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, we would, when I grew up and Smokey the Bear was popular, we'd put out every fire that started. Now they're letting more of them go for a while and burn patches. Now, the Native Americans, they use fire tremendously. They would set fire to a whole forest and get the game when it yeah, came out the other side. Run the yeah, that's so good. when the colonists came to Florida, a lot of it was open. It was open like this with these palmettos burned about every three or four years and you could ride a stallion through this with no problem because it was all new green growth. Uh, you'll see an area that was burned up here in about 10 minutes um, and you'll get an idea how quickly. I mean if you burn this today, five years, it would look like this again. Um, the palmettos wouldn't be quite as high, but so it's, main, it's a fire maintained community. Any any questions or anything you see you don't know? It gets built on a little less. If there's a high ridge, boy, it's hard to keep development off of that. How so, much of I'm sorry. Yeah. How much yeah. the uh, the southern yellow pine, the pine that occupies most of this area, yeah. is there a, a tertiary level or a, a boundary to where that pine? I mean, because they don't have this yellow pine up north or out west. Okay. Or is it is it because of the water? How much water it retains? or water, water needs that keeps it in this area? Well, when you say yellow pine, that's a generic for a whole group of pines. There are three or four pines out here, and they're all called yellow pine, mm -hmm. slash pine, pond pine, longleaf pine, spruce pine. This, 
the pine flatwoods is primarily slash pine and uh, loblolly pine. Loblolly. Loblolly pine. And is that uh, because of the soil is sandy and and, uh, and, this, wow. and if this used to be ocean, then it's salt? Uh, no, the salt is washed out. Salt is washed acidic, out. Right? <clears throat> but it's very acidic. And when you, the, if we were okay. to take our soil logger that some of you saw the other day and drill down here about three to six feet, you'd hit a layer of clay because it was old ocean bottom. And that keeps the water from entering soil very far. Okay. So if you got a week's worth of rain in here, this would all be very, very wet. And it doesn't drain into the soil, it has to run off to the lake. So, um, so that's sand underneath that clay? It's called hard pan. And it's, it's, it's a clay layer that might be this thick to this mm. thick, sometimes two or three. So that's why we really don't have a lot of, we don't have, you notice we don't have a lot of lakes in Jacksonville that are natural, very, very few because um, the water runs off a lot of it, goes to a stream and goes on out to the ocean. From our sea uh, level? Yeah. So uh, this area can get very wet. You notice on the map I gave you, it said, it said like boggy area right here. here. You never know this is boggy, but you could walk through after a rain, it would be two, three inches deep just sitting there. So there's clay under the sand, so that would be like... That's, that's <laughs> called, that keeps the, that keeps it what's called poorly drained. This is a poorly drained soil. Um, and we're going to go up on the hill up here. It's only about 20 feet higher than this, and it's very well drained, and you'll see a huge difference. Oh, go away, bug. Okay, very good. Well, that's not, there is a blueberry in here. I'll, I'll point it out. There's a lot of blueberry in here. This is St. John's Ward. Anybody take that for uh, mental acuity? And no. You can go buy it in the store. It's called St. John's Ward. It interacts with too many of my medications. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. What do, what do yeah, men you have take to be careful with that. For? What's that? What do men take saw palmetto for? for what? Prostate. For prostate. Yep. Yay, right. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently something right. about saw palmetto berries that seem to slow down prostate cancer growth or swelling of the prostate gland. Wow. So if you go north, of, if you're on US-1 up by Waycross, you'll see signs, Pine Flatwoods just goes for miles, and that it'll say um, saw palmetto berry harvest, uh, you know, workers wanted, and you walk through the woods and you and you cut, they, they produce berries in big clumps like this, so you cut a whole stem, and, but they actually harvest it up there. Oops. We did this right here. Okay, so we're about almost halfway. The animals that'll live anywhere, and the worse it is, the more messed up it is, the better they do. One of them is wax myrtle. This is the one that smells like a, a holiday candle. If you crush up the leaves <clears throat> and smell them, they smell spicy. <laughs> I have those in my backyard. Tear them up, crush them up for privacy. You can put you can put it in candles. They make they make um, wax myrtle candles, but it'll grow on roadsides, railroad tracks, uh, you know, um, and in the woods too. So it's called a generalist. Like wax myrtle. <laughs> so, generalists are plants and animals that have a broad range of areas they live. They would never be an indicator species because they don't indicate anything. <laughs> so you'd find this along the road out there, and you'd find it right up next to the lake, you'd find it down in the hammock. So, um, and there are some animals like that too. Um, Badgers. Yeah, some of the common animals that you find anywhere. Squirrels. Yeah, that's, that's good. My, mice, certain cotton mice, and certain rats. And not necessarily crummy animals. They just, uh, armadillos seem to pretty much do do well anywhere in Florida. Possums pretty much anywhere. Okay, we're going to go up to a ridge. Ocala scrub, which is our old beach and dunes, and they're solid sand pine, but there's this is one lonely sand pine, and it's doing so well because it's up on this mound of sand. But it, it's very it looks like you, it don't doesn't see, belong you don't see here. any other pines around except yeah. for that guy right yeah. there. There's another one. So a bird, a bird, bird may have dropped some seeds around here or something. Bird may have pooped. Bit. Baggy bobcat. Foxhole. It's an old log. Yeah. Bobcat.
long. Very. Do they have like long? Because I've been seeing them around the neighborhood when I walk. They're about this long, and they've got a bunch. Of yes, the that's the same thing. Okay. So this is mulberry. French mulberry. French mulberry. 